Hello, this is Monica Reinagel, and you're listening to the Nutrition Diva Podcast. Welcome. Today's episode was supported by Griffin Home. Griffin's comfortable sheets and duvets are made with premium quality Supima cotton, so you can enjoy the most comfortable sleep of your life. For a limited time, you can try these sheets for free for 30 days, no strings attached. If you don't like them, just send them back and you won't be charged. Visit griffinhome.com or search for Griffin Home and use the code DIVA at checkout. That's G-R-Y-P-H-O-N home.com and the code DIVA. Today we're going to take a look at the claims and the evidence for something called the GAPS diet. GAPS stands for Gut and Psychology Syndrome, and it was proposed by Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride. She's a medical doctor with a specialty in neurology, and she believes that many neurological and psychological conditions, including autism, ADHD, dyslexia, depression, schizophrenia, obsessive compulsive disorder, and many others, are actually due to problems in the gut. Broadly speaking, McBride's theory is that intestinal permeability allows toxins to escape through the lining of the intestinal tract and into the bloodstream where they travel to the brain and impair function. McBride has developed a dietary protocol which is intended to heal the gut, thereby clearing the toxins from the brain and restoring normal function. And she claims to have cured her own child of autism using this protocol. The GAPS diet protocol begins with an elimination phase that can last up to a year. It's very restrictive, and it starts out with bone broth, fermented vegetable juice, and herbal tea. And then very gradually, you introduce small amounts of other foods, including egg yolks, meat, cooked vegetables, eventually small amounts of fruit and some nut flours. But your diet consists primarily of bone broth, meat, and vegetables. When you complete the elimination phase, you are considered to be in the maintenance phase, and your diet consists of the GAPS protocol-approved foods that you introduced in phase one, and you continue to avoid refined carbohydrates, preservatives, and artificial colorings. And this phase continues for another one to two years. Finally, during the reintroduction phase, you're allowed to introduce some starchy carbohydrates, such as potatoes and whole grains, but you continue to avoid all processed foods and refined carbohydrates. Now, obviously, you'd have to be pretty motivated to follow a regime this restrictive for this long, which is why the GAPS diet generally only appeals to people or the parents of people suffering from pretty severe symptoms. Basically, you'd have to be pretty desperate to sign on for something like this, but if it works, might it be worth it? Unfortunately, there are no studies to support the effectiveness of this regime, only anecdotal reports, starting with McBride's claim to have cured her own child's autism. But anecdotal reports are notoriously unreliable. For one thing, there are always a lot of uncontrolled variables that make it really hard to say whether the observed effect was really due to the proposed cause. But Don't a whole lot of positive anecdotal reports start to add up to plausible evidence? Not necessarily. As the science nerds like to say, the plural of anecdote is not data. For one thing, people who have a positive result are much more likely to share that result than people who don't get any benefit. This is called reporting bias, and it tends to make positive outcomes seem much more likely than they actually are. Even if this protocol does bring some relief, the leaky gut explanation doesn't hold much water. A few weeks ago, dietitian and digestive specialist Tamara Freuman was on the podcast to talk about intestinal permeability and the so-called leaky gut syndrome. As Tamara explained, even if there is some degree of intestinal permeability, that doesn't mean that toxins or undigested food particles are being released into the bloodstream, much less being transported to the brain. That's simply not how the gut or the bloodstream works. People who actually manage to adhere to this protocol may in fact perceive some benefits, but it might have to do with entirely different mechanisms than the ones proposed by McBride. And I'll have more to say on that after these words from our sponsors. Dreaming of a beach vacation? Start planning your escape to Panama City Beach, Florida. Imagine spending your days doing the things you love, all in a setting of sugar white beaches and turquoise waters. Discover endless family fun, heart-pounding thrills, eco-adventure, and romance. 
Make it memorable. Get up close to dolphins in their natural habitat on a boat tour or go paddle boarding. Make it exhilarating. Find your thrills flying on a jet ski, kayaking at sunset, or snorkeling in turquoise waters. It's everything an adrenaline junkie lives for. Make it incredible. Bike along the beach, take an airboat tour, or explore the secluded beauty of two state parks. And make it special with a romantic getaway. Relax and reconnect with dining on the beach, breathtaking sunsets, and enough live music to dance the night away. So make it yours. Make it Panama City Beach, your real fun beach. Plan your escape now at visitpanamacitybeach.com. And today's episode was also supported by Honest Tea. If you've ever tried an honest beverage, you already know they're delicious. But what you might not know is that Honest is also dedicated to supporting fair trade certified suppliers. For every fair trade certified product Honest sells, they give back a premium to a community development fund in that supplier's community. And then the farmers decide together how to spend their funds to improve their lives. These funds go towards vital resources like clean water, schools, healthcare, and equipment. And that's why the small choice of what to drink when you're thirsty can mean a lot to a lot of people. Isn't it amazing how such a small decision can have such a positive ripple effect around the world? I'm really happy to support a company that is committed to making a difference. Visit honesttea.com slash podcast to learn more about Honest and how your small decision has a really big impact. And now let's take a look at the potential advantages and disadvantages of the GAPS diet protocol. A very limited diet like this can help to calm an irritated gut. And a carefully executed elimination diet can help to identify foods to which you might be having a negative reaction. However, these protocols can be implemented over the course of weeks and months, not years. And even when there are no specific food intolerances, simply reducing or removing caffeine, alcohol, highly processed foods, refined carbohydrates, and added sugars could definitely help someone feel a lot better. To the extent that the GAPS diet produces positive results, these benefits could likely be achieved with a far less punishing regime. And given the extreme restrictiveness and the long duration of the protocol, there's also a very real possibility of serious nutrient shortfalls. Using this protocol with an autistic child presents additional challenges. As autism advocate Jamie Ann Vercade points out, children with autism frequently have very limited diets already due to sensory processing issues that make them very sensitive to and intolerant of a lot of textures, smells, and tastes. Autistic kids also often struggle with any change in their routine. Introducing one new food can be incredibly difficult for an autistic child, let alone completely derailing a familiar eating routine and replacing it with something brand new. This makes the child all the more susceptible to malnutrition because they're likely to reject new foods, at least at first, and are not ideal candidates to sustain such a restrictive diet long term. Before we put these kids and their families through such an ordeal, it's worth at least trying a less extreme approach. One study, for example, found that eliminating gluten and casein-containing foods, such as wheat and dairy, led to improvements in function for some kids diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. Although a gluten-free, casein-free diet is no easy lift, it's a heck of a lot less restrictive than the GAPS diet. Although dietary interventions sometimes do reduce outward manifestations of autism, that doesn't necessarily mean that the person is less autistic. Bercade points out that autistic people frequently have very poor digestive health, and whether this is cause or effect is not yet completely understood. Many of the most recognizable autistic traits are much more obvious when an autistic person is under stress or unwell. When neurotypical people become stressed or sick, their coping mechanisms are much more widely recognized and accepted by the general public. They might be cranky or snippy, things that we recognize as a normal response to stress and chronic sickness. When an autistic person is stressed or chronically ill, 
They might find comfort in repeating certain phrases over and over, stimming with hand flapping, or be much more easily overwhelmed by their surroundings due to sensory overload, which can lead to a meltdown. So when an autistic person is well, it may not be so obvious that they are autistic because they don't need to resort to these regulators or regulating behaviors. I would imagine this could be true of people with other conditions the GAPS diet claims to treat as well. When your body is healthy, you have way more mental, emotional, and physical resources to manage your mental health. So let's sort the wheat from the chaff here. There's little doubt that there's an intimate two-way connection between our guts and our brains. An unhealthy gut can increase stress and anxiety, for example. And psychological treatment for stress or depression can often lead to improvements in functional GI diseases. And whether or not you suffer from a psychological or a neurological condition, improvement in gut function and symptoms is likely to improve your quality of life and your general ability to function. There is also ongoing research into the role that our gut microbiota play in our emotional and psychological well-being. A healthy gut and microbiome appears to support mental and emotional health as well as physical health, and a healthy diet plays a key role in supporting that microbiome. But before embarking on a radical and unproven protocol, start by taking the obvious steps. Reduce your intake of added sugars, highly processed foods, and empty calories. Build your diet primarily on nutrient-dense foods like fruits, vegetables, legumes, fish, nuts, eggs, and whole grains. Eat as much plant fiber from as wide a variety of sources as you can comfortably tolerate to promote a healthy microbiome, and enjoy fermented and cultured foods as a source of beneficial bacteria. Now, if after all of that you still feel unwell, you might consider working with a qualified nutrition professional on a supervised elimination diet to identify any potential food intolerances, but you do not have to live for a year on bone broth and sauerkraut in order to promote a healthy gut and microbiome. And claims that this extreme and potentially harmful protocol can treat or cure psychological or neurological conditions such as autism, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, or ADHD are supported by neither evidence nor logic. My thanks to Jamie Ann Brickade for her contributions to today's show. You'll find a transcript along with links to some of the research that I discussed on our website at quickanddirtytips.com, along with the entire Nutrition Diva archives. If you have a question or a topic you'd like me to cover in a future episode, call the Nutrition Diva listener line at 443-961-6206. I'd love to hear from you. Our show is edited by Karen Hertzberg, produced by Nathan Sems. Our advertising manager is Michelle Margulis. Our community manager is Morgan Ratner. And we're also supported by Emily Miller, Mikaela Prell, and Kathy Doyle. Thanks to our sponsors for their support. But most of all, thanks to you for listening. I'll be back next week with a look at whether drinking tart cherry juice can help with arthritis. Until then, have a great week.